is News 8 at 5. We have a strong snow squall moving across Connecticut right now. Live look, Waterbury on the left. That is New Haven on the right, and the snow is quickly moving on through. That line bringing in some cold air, too. That's forcing some school districts to cancel after-school activities. We're glad you're here, everybody. I'm Darren Kramer. I'm Ann Nyberg. Hamden is closing town hall, libraries, and other offices early. Here's meteorologist Joe Fury with the latest on all of this. Joe. All right, Darren and hi, everybody. It's a, well, rare snow squall warning that's uh, been out for us this afternoon. The snow squall warning has expired now for Litchfield and Fairfield counties, at least the western portions. Hartford County with a snow squall warning. Uh, so now the nasty weather is entering the 91 corridor, uh, right from Chicopee to Enfield to Hartford, Middletown, down to New Haven. And then Route 9 and Route 2, 84 is a mess in western Connecticut right now. Uh, so that snow squall warning is progressing across the state as we speak. Uh, so it's uh, going to be, as we uh, work our way uh, through the next hour, dangerous travel conditions that are out there. Uh, so we're, we're certainly uh, suggesting that if you do not have to travel right now, don't. Uh, just let these squalls roll through, and uh, then we'll be uh, talking about uh, improving weather conditions as we head into this evening in terms of the fact the snow will be gone, but then it's uh, going to be the bitter cold. Mohawk Mountain was in uh, a whiteout condition uh, just a little while ago. Visibility has improved. Danbury, still uh, visibility down a little bit. Long Wharf, 95, starting to see the snow really start to fill in. And Hartford, you're about to get into it. The squall is about to enter Hartford, temperature at 28 degrees. Uh, and this is the scene from Waterbury, uh, highly whitened up in just uh, uh, the last few minutes as the visibility was down at around zero. Uh, so uh, we're talking about uh, what's going to be as we go on through uh, this evening. Rapidly falling temperatures, snow blowing with the snow squall warning that's in effect for the central part of the state, soon to be for eastern areas. Wind chills going down below zero, 15 to 30 below wind chill advisory in effect for the overnight tonight into early tomorrow. So we'll talk more about the snow and the cold and a warm up in the 8 day forecast coming up. But for now, you want to talk about cold? Meteorologist Ashley Baylor is going to show us uh, that in just a little while. Back to you guys. All right, thanks so much. Those snow squalls are moving through the state, as Joe just said. Yeah, meteorologist Sam Cantro has been chasing after them. Now he's in the mobile weather lab on I-691. How is it out there, Sam? I'll tell you one thing, we are literally going right into it right now. By the way, this is our weather intern, Luca, on his first day, nonetheless, getting such crazy busy weather. Look at the conditions right in front of us here, um, and we have literally gotten into this over the last, no joke, 15 or 20 seconds. So let's hang tight together over the next 60 seconds or so so you can see just how quickly the conditions deteriorate. So we went from 55 or so miles per hour, no problem along 691 here. We're, uh, we're in Cheshire going towards the direction of um, Waterbury. And now within the last, I would say literally, I don't know what, 60 seconds, we can see that the ground is starting to get covered up over here. And we're kind of going right into the middle of this. So cars slow down extremely quickly. And now on the highway, despite the fact that they've been treated, we have seen DOT crews that are out and about. Um, salting the roads. Now the road is completely covered and this is exactly what you're going to encounter over the next 15 minutes if you are traveling in and around Hartford. New Haven will be shortly after that as well and then moving over towards the uh, eastern part of Connecticut. Now are the roads impassable? No they're not impassable but can you see in front of us? Not really. I mean we're looking at a couple hundred foot visibility right now where I can't even see the exit sign in uh, exit 2 is where we are and then it just basically shows up. Um, so that's what you have to contend with. Of course, the cars are going to be breaking, and now we're talking about the time being literally 5.02 p.m., which is the most inconvenient time for this to happen for us here in Hartford and in New Haven and, of course, Waterbury as well. I did get some reports uh, from Danbury where they have seen enough snow that it's going to stick around and accumulate, and it's enough to shovel or maybe even plow as well. And the cars are going to slow down and slow down very quickly, too. So if you are traveling over in eastern Connecticut, just be aware of this. This is going to be moving in your direction. I'll be live on Facebook in a couple of minutes so you can see just how bad this is during the duration of the snow squall moving through. A lot of wind, very poor visibility, and the road conditions getting bad very, very quickly. We will see you on Facebook Live, uh, and we'll talk to you again at 6 o'clock as well. We'll see you later. Don't worry, the guy in the back seat's with us. It's an intern. He's along for the ride there tonight. 
get in a front row view. Uh, that line of snow squalls is bringing in some colder air, too. It's already very frigid in the Midwest. Meteorologist Ashley Baylor shows us what they're dealing with. Ashley. I mean, we have to talk about these wind chills that they were waking up to in the upper Midwest. I mean, look at this. It felt like 70 degrees below zero in Ely, Minnesota this morning. It felt like 63 below in Alexandria, Minnesota, and Eau Claire, Wisconsin, down towards Cedar Rapids, Iowa. It felt like 54 below. And of course, in the Windy City, wind gusts were picking up to about 30 miles per hour when they clocked a wind chill at about 52 degrees below zero. That was actually at Chicago O'Hare Airport. Now looking at the wind chills. These are current wind chills. Feels like 19 degrees in Hartford. Okay, we can deal with that. But it still feels like 30 below in Minneapolis. Feels like 38 degrees below in Chicago. So this cold is nothing to mess around with. Here we are at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning when wind chills are expected to range anywhere from 10 to 20 degrees below zero. Maybe even in some spots approaching 30 degrees below zero. And notice as we continue through the day tomorrow, it's going to be a struggle for it to actually feel feel anywhere at or even above zero. So you really need to bundle up all day tomorrow, not even just as you head out the door. So a good reminder of how you dress when it is that cold outside. You want to dress in multiple layers, usually thin layers, and your outer layer should be windproof because obviously winds will be picking up tomorrow. You want to wear winter socks, very warm socks with insulated boots, and of course have a hat, scarf, and mittens. The ones without the fingers are certainly best because those will keep your hands a little bit warmer. But on days like this, you just want to have minimal exposed skin. You want to spend a minimal time outside, even for your pets as well. We can't forget about them. If it's too cold for you, it's too cold for them. So don't let them stay out for very long as well. Of course, we'll keep you updated throughout the night. And certainly meteorologist, chief meteorologist Gil Simmons will be in tomorrow morning to show you exactly how cold it is where you live. All right, Ashley, thanks. New at 5 tonight, three people accused of beating up security guards at a school in Hartford. Two of them adults, one a 15-year-old boy. This happened this morning at the Annie Fisher School on Plainfield Street. News 8's Mario Boone is live with what sparked this violence. Mario. Well, and just within the last hour, we got this news release from the Hartford Police Department giving more details on the two adults and a teen arrested this morning outside Annie Fisher Montessori School. Matthew Luck. Amber Mills and her 15 year old son charged with assault on public safety officers, breach of peace and other related crimes. Now we're told this all began when school security guards asked Locke to move their car from the bus lane. Cops say Locke then attacked the guard helped by Mills and her son. Now a second guard tried to intervene, but police say he too was attacked. Now one guard had a head injury and had to be rushed away to the hospital. We talked to a parent about all this. Listen to what she said. The way we react in front of our children is not really suitable for them to see us get arrested and the child get arrested. That's inappropriate for the parents to do that. Now, school leaders did send home a letter informing other parents of what happened there. Uh, names of the guards involved have not been released. The juvenile was released on a summons to appear in court. His mother and the man she was with being held pending a bail tonight. Reporting live from New Haven, I'm Mario Boone, News 8. I'm Mario, thank you. A Connecticut prison inmate is accused of trying to have his brother-in-law killed. 29-year-old Joseph Arroyo was arrested yesterday. Police say while he was locked up at the New Haven Correctional Center in May, he tried to hire other inmates to kill his brother-in-law. Arroyo is now behind bars at a prison in Summers. A New Haven man is facing charges for shooting in Hamden. 33-year-old Raymond Morris is under arrest. Authorities say he shot a woman in the thigh, a man in his ankle. It happened at the end of September near Off the Hook on Dixwell Avenue. Morris is being held on $200,000 bond. A man wanted in an armored truck heist in Kentucky is behind bars in Connecticut tonight. 29-year-old Mark Espinoza was arrested in Weathersfield. A federal warrant says he worked for an armored truck company. He and his partner went to a mall in Louisville last month to pick up cash. His partner told him to stay with the truck. When he came out, he says Espinosa and hundreds of thousands of dollars were gone. The FBI says he has ties to New Britain. A drug bust in New Britain turns up seven ounces of cocaine. 41-year-old Angel Velez is charged with running a drug factory. Police searched his apartment on Corbin Avenue. They found the drugs plus more than $50,000 in cash. He's free on $250,000 bond. Conspiracy theorist Alex Jones is asking that the defamation lawsuits filed against him by some Sandy Hook families be moved to another part of the state. His lawyers want the case moved to Wyndham County. They say pretrial publicity has made it impossible to get a fair trial in Bridgeport. 
Lawyers for the families say they will fight moving the trial. The families say followers of Jones have harassed and threatened them after he claims Sandy Hook was a hoax. The power of wind could bring a boost to the local economy in New London. The state is looking to invest in clean energy. News 8's Tina Detail shows us how the state pier in the Whaling City could play a major role. This time of year, towns line up to get the salt they need for their roads. And in the summer, lumber often lines the length of the Connecticut State Pier. But the city and state have their eyes on an offshore industry to increase activity here and provide an economic boost to the host city. I think you're going to see uh, Main Street, New London transformed over the next five years. Governor Ned Lamont continued the state's investment in State Pier to make it more viable to the offshore wind industry. The state has already committed money to improve the Deepwater Pier and now announced a public-private partnership between the Connecticut Port Authority, Gateway Terminal, which operates the pier, and the city of New London. We're proud of it, but we've never really had the benefit of, um, of, the, of that, that asset. So this is, this is a very, very historic moment for the city of New London. New London will receive 10% of the Port Authority's share of the revenue from the pier. The city will also receive a $75,000 annual fee to help offset the costs of fire, police, and other city services. Now, the mayor, like many others, would like to see this become a transportation hub for those companies hoping to build wind farms just a few miles off New London's coast. We believe we have the best port geographically. We want to make sure they understand that this will be the best port to operate out of economically also. We think about our energy mix to make sure we have affordable, clean energy for the next 25 years. This is a part of that. The governor says also part of this partnership push is the fact New London is a major transportation hub, maritime and rail, and will grow thanks to jobs created by the wind industry and electric boats expansion. In New London, Tina Detell, News 8. Another concern about climate change. Could it affect the health of your baby? We'll have that. I'm Jocelyn Mementa. The cold weather keeping you from working out? Why that should not keep you from staying fit? That's ahead in your weekly wellness report. Also, record-setting cold gripping parts of the country. Again tonight, wind chills more than 60 below in spots. The dangerous effects that's having on parts of the Midwest. And taking a live look right now at Hartford, look at this, covered in snow. Meteorologist Jill Fury will have your latest forecast. And coming up new at 6 tonight, some call Patriots coach Bill Belichick a football genius. And the foundation for that success started here in Connecticut. We've got that story and more tonight at 6. You're watching News 8 at 5.30 with Ann Nyberg, Darren Kramer, and Joe Fury. All right, let's look live at New London now. Pretty clear, but a lot of snow squalls may be headed their way. Behind the line, some Arctic air. There's a little snow coming down the lights. Let's check it out. Joe Fury's watching this thing move on through the state. Joe. Darren, yeah, yes, uh, this is uh, a fierce hitting Arctic front that's got a wall of snow with it. Snow squall warnings have been out across the state, and now, well, the snow squall warning just uh, ended. Uh, for Hartford and Tallinn County, but the snow squall warning continues for eastern New Haven, Middlesex, and New London. Yes, heading for you. Western Connecticut, Mohawk Mountain, you couldn't see a thing uh, just a little while ago. Visibility's back. Danbury, yeah, you got it nicely coated up, uh, but your visibility's back up again. And New Haven, same idea. Snow squalls have moved east of New Haven, even Hartford. We couldn't see a thing just a little while ago in Hartford. Now the buildings are back as uh, the wind is picking up and the temperature is starting to drop. So here's the line right now just east of 91, and there's some snow filling in uh, out ahead of this line here, almost like a gust front in the summertime, uh, with 395 uh, getting an initial batch now, and then you're going to get the main batch coming in in the next half an hour or so. Winds, look at this. Gusts just happened. 43 miles per hour at Bradley International, 38 at Tweed, New Haven. These winds mean business and temperatures are plummeting. Wind chills are already down in the single digits to near zero and it's going to feel like it's 10, 20, maybe even 30 below when you step out the door tomorrow morning. So get prepared for that wind chill advisory in effect as the snow squalls move out in the six o'clock hour and then the temperatures move on down and on the thermometer single digits to around zero as we step out the door tomorrow morning. But again, the wind is going to make it feel a whole lot worse and then well, guess what? As quick as this Arctic front 
and really nasty feel is in place for about 24 to 48 hours, the warm up in the eight day forecast coming up. All right, Joe, thanks. As that temperature drops, you might end up feeling the chill even inside your house. Tuesday's Kent Pierce talked to some pros about how best to keep the cold out. All homes need a certain amount of fresh air, but we usually find most homes, especially older homes, uh, leak maybe two or three times more than they should. Keith Saunders should know. He works for Larry Janeski's Dr. Energy Saver of Connecticut, teaching technicians at the country's largest energy conservation training center here in Seymour. So some of the leaks that we encounter in our homes are things like recessed can lights in our ceiling. Lights that make a hole in the ceiling mean a hole in the attic insulation. They cut a hole in the sheetrock and install the light. The light has all sorts of holes in it. I can actually see down down into the room below. The solution? Can light covers sealed in place. So that we can cover them and they're no longer going to be a source of heat loss. And that pink fiberglass insulation is not really that good and here there's not enough of it. The Department of Energy says that we should be here in Connecticut up around R60. Professionals like Dr. Energy Saver use cellulose insulation, basically ground up newspaper, and pump that into attics. Of course, it's not just at the top of the house. Drafts can come in through any hole in the wall for light switches and outlets, and from the basement too. So if you're sitting up here and you feel cold air coming up from the basement or cold floors, it's oftentimes because that uh, the rim joist, this piece of, of wood here that attaches to the foundation is not insulated. Spray foam insulation can solve that problem. Ironically, even your chimney can be making your house colder with gaps between it and the rest of the house. Here we've installed metal flashing, fire rated caulking, and fireproof rock wool insulation. And we're going to finish this up to seal around the chimney with fireproof materials, and then we can safely insulate against here to close this gap. He says when they fully insulate a home, on average, they end up reducing fuel and energy consumption by about a third. In Seymour, I'm Kent Pierce, News 8. And the big game this weekend is keeping business in East Haven pretty busy. Sugar Bakery has been making cupcakes with the logos and colors of the New England Patriots and the L.A. Rams. Bakery makes all the logos themselves as well as other cupcakes that are football themed. The co-owner says the Super Bowl has become just as busy as Valentine's Day and even Christmas. Luckily, the Patriots are very local to us and near and dear to our hearts, so it's a super huge weekend for us. People stop in and get cupcakes. Bakers at Sugar will be busy leading up to Sunday. If you need cupcakes for a party, you can pre-order or just walk right into the store. Millions of people will tune in for that game this weekend. New England taking on the Rams Sunday. And nearly all of them will watch on television. News 8's Ruthie Polinski live in Atlanta with a behind-the-scenes look at Sunday's broadcast. <laughs> Ruthie. He's been hustling. You guys are making me hungry talking about bakeries and cupcakes. Yeah, that's right, you guys. Not everyone is lucky enough to get to watch the big game from inside that beautiful building behind me. Most people will be watching the game from their home, their couch, watching the game on television. So today we took a little peek behind the curtain and got a look of behind the scenes of what goes on into the television production that is the big game. Over 100 million people will be watching the Super Bowl from their TV this year on CBS. The Super Bowl is the biggest show we do. Um, it takes over um, 14 production systems all tied together. We have hundreds of people working towards this effort. 115 cameras will capture the action to ensure you, the viewer, doesn't miss a second of action. We have every angle, every square inch of this field is covered. There, there will never be a, a scenario where we miss some action, even if it's away from the play. CBS Sports deploying new technology for Super Bowl 53, like this 8K camera, which can zoom up to 800% without losing any clarity in the image. We will be able to really zoom in tight and make sure that, you know, the player was in, out of bounds, and get a, just a, a really new perspective of, of that type of a play. And new this year, an end zone pylon featuring camera angles never seen before. We have uh, the ability to show a wide angle or a tight shot right on the goal line, um, as well as on the sidelines surrounding the goal lines. It's a tremendous tool for us. One piece of technology that could decide the biggest game of the year. Uh, <laughs> it, possibly, it. yeah. <laughs> And guys, of those 115 cameras, 48 of them will be point of view cameras. The others are operated by either a human or a robot. And yes, there is a Tom Brady camera that stays on him the entire game to make sure you don't miss a single sideline reaction. Live in Atlanta tonight, I'm Ruthie Polinski. Darren and Ann, back to you guys. 
Thanks so much. Tune in all week as we get ready for the big game. Watch our New England Nation special. A look back tomorrow night at 7 on my TV 9. Whether you're rooting for the Patriots or the Rams, here's a reason to root for the game heading to overtime. Buffalo Wild Wings will offer everyone in America a free snack size order of wings if the game is tied at the end of regulation. So here's the deal. To get the deal, you have to dine in at Buffalo Wild Wings Monday, February 18th between 4 and 7 p.m. Will Social Security be around when you need it? Coming up, we'll show you some moves in Washington to try to stretch the lifespan of that troubled social program. Also, a Connecticut congresswoman pushing a bill demanding equal pay for women. A proposal for school regionalization and consolidation in Connecticut is burning up the wires on state capital social media. I'm Chief Political Correspondent Mark Davis. I'll have that story coming up.